Good morning. Welcome. It is Tuesday, the 22nd of February. Happy two day. It is two day all day long. Um, we have some very interesting news for you. Everything from what Mercedes is expecting to what Ford is doing tomorrow. All of that and more is to come today on Daily Car News. First things first, we have a story from Mercedes-Benz. The German manufacturer is expecting all of their EV, all of their production lines, excuse me, to be EVs by the end of the decade. Now we're expecting this. The writing is on the wall. A lot of countries are sort of dictating that um, you know that cars have to be EVs, that um, manufacturers have to produce only EVs by like 2030. So we can expect this, but to see it from the manufacturer is more confirmation of what is to come. Um, they have released some numbers, and this is what I want to go over. Last year, just 2.3% of Mercedes-Benz car sales, including Smart, um, were EVs. Now, that rose to 11% when you include plug-in hybrids. And in 2025, the automaker expects fully electric and plug-in hybrids to make almost 50% of all of their sales. Now, this is um, with the fully electric to, ex you know, expected to make up a majority of that 50%. The writing is on the wall when it comes to electric cars. They are coming and they are, they are going to be here to stay. In 2030, most, if not all, of Mercedes um, production lines will be electric. Now, they aren't, they aren't sort of switching everything over right now. They will be doing everything incrementally. Of course, it's Mercedes. You expect them to do the responsible thing. But they're doing everything incrementally to make sure that they can adapt to demand as time passes. Now I want to move over to Italy, where the Ferrari Purasang might have just been leaked on Instagram. Yes, I'll see if we can include a photo in our video, but if not, they'll be down in the, de the description down below for the links to the Instagram. But Coche Spias, which I assume is car spies in Italian, has released photos from what looks like inside the Ferrari factory I see, I think, what looks like an SF90 Stradale, I think, or another Ferrari, definitely, next to it. Um, but this is very much a Ferrari, and it's very much a four-door SUV. The Purasang is taking the reins, if you will, from the GTC4 Lusso um, sort of four-door sedan Ferrari, sort of, if you will, um, wagon kind of thing. Um, but this is very much a Ferrari, and it is technically an SUV, if, you know... It, we were expecting something weird like this to happen from Ferrari when they announced that they were going to make an SUV. And then when they called it the FUV, the Ferrari Utility Vehicle, it makes sense. We're expecting a twin turbocharged or a turbocharged V8 engine. I hope we also do get a V12. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but I wouldn't expect anything too crazy. Ferrari is making everything with a turbocharged V8. Um, and what's nice is... Again, we'll see if we can include the photos, but if not, take a look at them in the description. But there is this sort of crease, this line that goes from the nose to the tail um, that makes it very sharp looking, very dynamic. I like the look of this car as much as I want to dislike it, you know, just because it's an SUV, right? Um, it's hard to get over that fact, but it does look unique. And I don't know if I like it yet, but... I think it has a chance to grow on me. So super cool to see this sort of pop up. Um, and I can't wait for Ferrari to, of course, release it themselves and for us to get a better understanding of what they would like to do with this line. Now, speaking of lines, Ford <laughs> denies spinning off their EV line and they're focusing on both EVs and internal combustion engines. We have a quote from a statement they made to Bloomberg News Quote, saying, we are focused on our Ford Plus plan to transform the company and thrive in this new era of electric and connected vehicles. We have no plans to spin off our battery electric vehicle business or our traditional internal combustion engine business. Now, this, I guess, puts some rest to the rumors that have been saying, hey, Ford might be spinning the EV line on its own thing. Call it the Lightning brand, you know, the Lightning F-150, the Lightning Mustang, whatever. Um, but I don't think that'll be the case. It'll all stay under the Ford umbrella. And I think Ford CEO Jim Farley has just at least told us, hey, pipe down. We're not ready to release anything just yet. Um, the demand will be there in the future. So, you know, us, I guess we will have to wait to see what they're going to do.
Now, I want to jump over to Japan, where it looks like demand for EVs in the Japanese market is rising, but JDM OEMs, Toyota, Nissan, Honda, might not be able to provide. This is very interesting because if you go to Japan right now, if you watch any videos of, of roads in Japan, you can expect you know Mazda, Toyota, Nissan, and Honda to be the four main manufacturers there, and it makes sense, you know, Mitsubishi, of course, um, but they those those companies aren't exactly leading in the EV market. You know, yes, Toyota has said they want to take a lead there, but they're a bit late. Nissan, sure, but the Nissan EV is only the Nissan Leaf. Honda, not really, at least not yet. Mazda, not really, at least not yet. Um, they have a couple of hybrids in the work, but nothing fully electric. So with the demand for EVs rising, this might be an opportunity for other companies to be like, hey, we want in. You know, Tesla is already selling in Japan. And of course, they're probably the most in demand or at least the most popular um, EV manufacturer, at least in the world. It's Tesla in the world of EVs, you know, come on. Um, but in Japan, the Model 3 is pretty popular. And of course, Hyundai and Kia are planning to go over to Japan and sell EVs only, right? So, you know, what's going to happen? This is going to be a very interesting development over the next few years because even if Toyota and Nissan are saying, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go all in on developing EVs, those cars don't exist yet. EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5 are here and, you know, they just got to make them and, and sell them in Japan. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen with this development. This will be very interesting to follow along in the next few years. An interesting story. I have a pretty sad story, but there was a video that popped up on YouTube and our Inside EVs partners were able to get um, at least one source saying that the driver was taken to hospital. A Kia EV6 hit a concrete barrier and burst into flame. It looks like the fire came from towards the nose of the vehicle, and we don't have any confirmation if it was rear-wheel drive or front-wheel or all-wheel drive. But if it was all-wheel drive, I guess it could make sense because there's electronics and motor electronics up in the front. Um, the car more or less did burn. Uh, it's it's undeniably burning in the grainy, low-quality video that sort of popped up online. So. I guess it's okay to, it, I guess it's a good thing that the driver was able to get out and go to the hospital and get the treatment that they need, but, you know, pour one out for the Kia EV6. It's a cool car, and I'm sorry that we have just lost one to a fire. Faraday is making a splash again. Now, if you don't recognize Faraday, Fer Michael Faraday was in the room of, you know, Nikola Tesla Thomas Edison, you know those guys in the late 1800s that were doing a lot of cool things. Um, Michael Faraday did a lot of stuff with electricity as well. So it's not unsurprising that a company making electric cars were to take uh, a page from Tesla's book and borrow the name of, a, um, of an inventor, if you will. Um, the FF91 is to be released tomorrow, actually, so keep an eye on that. It was first shown in 2018, but the company suggested it's finally almost done. Um, the interior is remarkable. We have a 27-inch screen for the rear passengers, a 17-inch screen for the front passengers, and 11 displays total. We'll have to see what this looks like in person. I want to talk about the motor specifics here, uh, spe specs if you will, sorry. The FF91 has up to 1,050 horsepower, 1,328 pound-feet of torque, thanks to a three-motor configuration. The manufacturer says that it could, it'll do 0 to 60 in 2.39 seconds with a top speed of 155 miles an hour. Faraday Future is targeting an EPA range of 378 miles an hour for the FF91 with a gigantic 130 kilowatt hour battery pack. An onboard charger is going to provide 15 kilowatts of charging and if you hook it up to a fast charger, a DC fast charger, it'll draw 200 kilowatts to charge at a rate of over 200 miles per hour. We'll have to see what this is like in person. I know this has been in development for some time. You know, if, if this proves true, this will be a competitor to the Tesla Model S Plaid, maybe even the Tesla Model X Plaid, because this is more of a larger crossover type vehicle. Um, this isn't really in the Model Y category. Um, the Lucid Air will also be a competitor to the Faraday Future. So um, good luck with what you guys are doing, and I can't wait to see the car in person. And my final story for us today, Ford is debuting the next generation 
Ranger Raptor. Yes, it'll start out in Australia and it'll be actually all over the world. Um, but just last night, Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, has re responded to a tweet saying, Jim, when is this hitting the United States? This being the Ranger Raptor. Jim says Ranger and Ranger Raptor are both coming to the United States next year. Now that's 2023. This thing is ridiculous. The Raptor version, if you will. It is a twin turbocharged 3 liter EcoBoost V6 with a very robust 392 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque, 10 speed automatic that has different boost profiles for every gear um, it has selectable uh, exhaust profiles on the steering wheel um, everything from quiet normal sport and baja mode which is my favorite kind of mode i assume that's just as open as it can be and what's interesting here is it has um anti-lag you don't expect that in normal cars but it is here on the ranger raptor I love that and I can't wait to see what that sounds like because you hear that in rally cars, not necessarily production pickup trucks. I'm very interested in this thing. The interior looks awesome. It has the gigantic Ford touchscreen. It has sort of orange, red-ish accents all over the place. Um, this thing is cool and I can't wait to see what it's like. It'll have, you know, the normal sort of off-roady Ford Raptor. Um, Ford performance upgrades, so, you know, larger suspension, larger, or better suspension, larger wheel travel, you know, upgraded um, differentials and whatnot here and there. You get the picture, you know, like you, these uh, Ford guys, the Ford performance guys, they know what they're doing when it comes to um, Ford performance. So Ford has released videos of it jumping, of it sort of rock crawling, if you will, or a little bit. So this thing is cool i can't wait to see what it looks like in person i'm very excited this is my kind of pickup truck you know i don't do work i'm just a dude that likes cars so for me my kind of pickup does sort of the fun stuff rather than the necessary work stuff so super cool to see and we'll be including videos of ford's um, reveal of here of course so thank you so much for joining me today on this sort of weird episode of daily car news we have news from everywhere really everything from Japan to Mercedes, Italy, and back here to the United States. If you've been enjoying our content, please give us a like down below. And of course, leave a comment down below that like button. Um, tell us what you think of our show. If you want to follow us anywhere else on social media, we are at underscore daily car news on Twitter. I am at Gary Fasalvo. If you know anything that's happening in the car industry that you would like for me to talk about, go ahead and send me a shout and I'll see if we can include it in a show. Thank you for joining us today, this Tuesday today uh, on February 22nd, 2022. We will see you tomorrow on Daily Car News.